Hello and welcome to Steve Knows. I hope you've been enjoying the Unreal Engine VR Injector mod and I am back today to share with you 12 things that I have found to be useful when using this that resolves many issues that I had experienced. Things like what are the dang buttons that I press in game? Or why do I not have shaders in one eye? How do I improve my performance on my PC so I can enjoy these in VR? How do I prevent motion sickness? How do I snap turn? All of these things I'm going to go over today and I have 12 starter tips that I have learned over the past couple of days that I think you'll find useful. I do have to give a massive shout out to Waifu Enjoyer because the majority of what I've learned here, I learned to resolve through his content, his documentation and his help on Discord. So thank you so much for that. So that is enough chin wagging. Let's get started. Number one, the toggled config menu. So you do not need to be out of VR or in VR and hit that little X in the top corner to get rid of the configuration menu. What you can do is click your sticks in, your left and your right stick on your VR controller or your gamepad controller, and this will toggle the menu on or off. You can do this mid game as well in case you need to change something. This is going to be very useful for these next bunch of tips. Two, fixing a shader issue. So in some cases you may notice that in one eye you have certain visuals, in another eye you do not. This is very strange when you're playing and very off putting as each eye is being fed a different visual. So I experienced this whilst playing Star Wars and to get around this, I opened up the Unreal Engine VR toggle menu by pressing the sticks in. Then I go to the Unreal section and change the rendering type to be synced sequential. This resolved that issue. This is less performative and if you don't have a really good rig and you need every bit of juice that you can, there are other ways to get around this but they are a little bit more involved. If you want to maintain native stereo, I'll link a video down below that Waifu Enjoy created to help you resolve that problem. But this way is the quickest fix. Next is around the camera offset, which is so useful in third person experiences or godlike perspectives in game. So you may want to change the camera to be closer or further away from your character. In a game like Immortal Shell, for example, the default distance is kind of far in VR and the visuals became hazed by the environmental fog. So to resolve this, you open up that toggle menu, go to camera, then you can adjust these values to change the camera in 3D space. Then save the camera setting for next time you dive in so you don't have to do this again. On the topic of the camera, you may want to keep the camera's vertical plane still, especially if you're prone to motion sickness. Instead, you'll have to use your head to move and look around instead of the sticks on this vertical plane. So to do this, you want to visit the toggle menu, go to camera again and enable decoupled pitch. This is going to decouple the pitch from the stick and you'll have to use your head for that motion instead. Next, in some first person titles, different weaponry may come into your view but not be fully visible. It is being clipped. Because when you're playing flat screen, that part of the gun would not normally be on screen anyway. But now because we're in VR, we have a larger field of view, you may need to adjust the weapon clipping value. So you can remove this clipping by going to the toggle menu, going to the Unreal section, and then change the adjust the near clip plane value. Adjusting that value should bring the full weapon or item that's being clipped into the virtual world. Something really important because flat screen games were not meant to be played in VR so the performance hit can be rather intensive and you want it to be as smooth as possible. So to ensure that you have a relatively decent experience or improve your odds of enjoying the game, reduce the in-game graphical settings, reduce the texture quality, remove shadows, remove motion blur and reduce the refresh rate to 60 as the lowest or 72 to match the headset's refresh rate if you can be that specific. However, if you do set it to 60, you need to ensure that the headset refresh rate is also set to 120. If it's not set to 120, you will see ghosting, you will have more jitter. Even though you're not having worse performance, it will look like you are through your headset. So that is paramount. You also want to enable DLSS or TSR or any other super sampling you have available if you're on an AMD card. If you don't have this option available, toggle your menu, go to the console and in here, you can turn up something called temporal A 
algorithm. If this is available for you to use, it will provide you with some upscaling capabilities. You also want to reduce the Unreal Engine VR resolution scale value. This will give you a little bit more headroom as it's not rendering at a higher resolution. You can also reduce the screen percentage ever so slightly, which will reduce the amount required for render and give you slightly more overhead. So to, in the toggle menu under Unreal, you'll find OpenXR and here you can mess around with the scaling. So the next one is around profiles. You should be made aware of profiles because they contain predefined configuration for certain games so it can be played in the best way possible and save you from having to go through the pain of figuring out how to set up things like motion controls. Profiles is how I was able to play Returnal as a first person shooter motion controlled game. So you can find these in the starter guide, which I'll link down below in the description. You simply just download the zip file and then in the Unreal Engine VR app, click import config. Then select the zip file of the profile that you've just downloaded and it's going to create a directory, a space of its contents in the UEVR global directory. There is a repository underway, which was recently tweeted out by the flat to vr community that's going to house these profiles so we can come together as a community and have a one-stop shop for these profiles so we can just get up and play these games. Amazing to see. This has only been out a couple of days and we're already seeing moves like this. There is also a big issue on what games can I play? What games will run well on my system? And what games do I own can I play? So the flat to vr community have created a testing document. I'll link it down below in the description. And it has all the games that they had tested. They tested hundreds. And the best way to do this is to filter this page by the rating section from A to Z. This will give you the best titles out of the box to the worst titles out of the box in descending order. But to find all games that are unreal titles, that you could potentially play, go to the Steam DB tech page and look for the Unreal Engine page there. It will list over 11,000 titles. To find out what games you own that are Unreal and their versions, use RayPal. I'll leave a link down below in the description. You simply download it, unzip it, and open the application. This also links to the Epic Game Store, not just Steam. So in this app, it will tell you what titles you own at Unreal and their version. Also, you can sign up to Xbox Game Pass for a monthly fee and play Unreal titles there instead of buying them all. You can just subscribe to a service and play them that way because we're just looking for the binary. It doesn't matter if it's on Steam or not. Another one that took some fiddling to graph, so I'll share it, is the button mapping. What are the buttons that get linked to your VR controllers so you can play these games without a joypad? You can use your VR controllers instead. So thank you to Waifu Enjoyer again for this information. The D-pad, this one got me. The D-pad is actually activated by resting your right thumb on the sensor pad of the Quest 3 right controller and then using the left stick in the direction you wish to activate. The L3 and R3 buttons are clicking the sticks in just like they are on a gamepad. The Xbox A button is the A button on Quest. Xbox X button is the B button on Quest. Xbox B button is the X button on Quest. And Xbox Y is the Y button on Quest. The left and right trigger, of course, are the triggers on the controllers. The left bumper and right bumper are the grips on the controllers. And the pause button I found is the Y and X button at the same time. The next tip is when you boot up a game and you're in and you're ready to enjoy the experience, it's recommended that you get into your position where you will be standing or sitting and hit the shortcuts, right trigger, pressing B, X and Y, or you can use the mouse on the toggle menu and click reset view, reset origin and reset height. So this means you're in the central position, the perfect position to enjoy the experience you're about to play. The next tip is some of you may enjoy snap turning and you don't want smooth turning. You don't always want to have smooth turning if you are prone to motion sickness and this is the default. So what you can do is you can open the toggle menu and look under input. Here you will see enable snap turning. Then you can adjust how much you want to turn among some other options as well so it fits your needs. That's 12 tips that should help you get started, help you resolve some of the issues you may have faced. You can dive in and play. Let me know if you have learned anything from these tips. Perhaps you've learned something that I haven't mentioned here as well. Please comment down below so I can learn and we can share it with the community. These are just the main ones that I've come across that don't go deep diving into developing and adjusting configurations at a deep level to enable things like motion controls. They are a little bit more complicated, but I will cover them. I'm getting there. But for now, enjoy. Have a great week. Happy gaming. Good day.